These two babies, Cayenne and Remy, were born in April 2005. If you couldn't tell by their appearance, these two girls are twins. This illustrates that skin color is no way related to genetics or the genetic makeup of humans. In 1970, elementary school teacher Jane Elliott conducted this experiment, which was incorporated into William Peters' documentary, The Eye of the Storm, for ABC television. In the video, the privileged authority figure, being the teacher, decided who is the advantages over the other. The first day, the teacher gives the advantages to the blue-eyed kids by saying they're smarter, deserve to assist over the others, etc. And is there anyone in this United States that we do not treat as our brothers. Yes. Who? Yes. The, black the, black people. People. the black people. Who else? In there? Absolutely the Indians. And when yeah. you see, when many people see a black person or a yellow person or a red person, what do they think? Uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Dumb people. And look at the dumb people. What else do they think sometimes? What kinds of things do they say about black people? Oh, uh, they're niggers. Niggers. It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? Yeah. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Since I'm the teacher and I have blue, the blue-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess, while the brown-eyed people have to stay in. The brown-eyed people do not get to use the drinking fountain. You'll have to use the paper cups. You brown-eyed people are not to play with the blue-eyed people on the playground because you are not as good as blue-eyed people. Well, the brown-eyed people in this room today are going to wear collars so that we can tell from a distance what color your eyes are. And it seemed like when we were down on the bottom, everything bad was happening to us. The way they treated you, you felt like you didn't even want to try to do anything. It seemed like Mrs. Elliot was taking our best friends away from us. What's wrong with being called brown eyes? It means that we're stupid or, well, not that, yeah. but. Oh, that's just the same yeah. way as other people call uh, black people niggers. Yeah. Is that the reason you hit him, John? The second day, she switches the two around by giving the brown-eyed the advantages over the blue. In relation to the topic of race, this is an appropriate example of how people who had authority determine who are privileged, such as for the blacks and whites. In this video, the day the blue eyes had privileges, they represented the white-skinned people having advantages over the blacks. The fact that the privileges of a group can simply be changed overnight demonstrates how colorism is an idea and only made up. Yesterday, I told you that brown-eyed people aren't as good as blue-eyed people. That wasn't true. I lied to you yesterday. The truth is, that brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. <laughs> the brown-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess. You blue-eyed people are not allowed to be on the playground equipment at any time. You blue-eyed people are not to play with the brown-eyed people. Brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. They are smarter than blue-eyed people. And if you don't believe it, look at Brian. This photo was taken by the American Anthropological Association and Science Museum of Minnesota. The t-shirts show how the social constructs of race have evolved over time. As demonstrated by this young woman's t-shirt, in the 1800s, she most likely would have been classified as a slave because of her dark skin. In 1920, because of her mixed heritage, she would most likely have been labeled mulatto, and during the 1960s, she would have most likely been labeled negro. The paper bag test was an actual test and was commonly used in the early 1900s to determine if a black person's skin was white 
enough to have certain privileges to be accepted in everyday life. If your skin was darker than the bag, you weren't awarded these privileges. Kenneth Clark created doll tests to kids. He presented two identical dolls with the only difference being skin color and different color hair. The kids were asked which doll was nicer, which they liked to play with, and which one looks bad, etc. Kiri Davis, a high school student, recreated Clark's doll test in 2005 to see how much kids' stereotypes evolved from 1940s, or in this case, didn't. 15 out of 21 picked white when asking which is the nice doll. Davis figured out that nothing has changed. Can you show me the doll that you like best or that you'd like to play with? This one. I like that one. I'm killing. This one. That one? This one. I like to play with this. And can you show me the doll that is the nice doll? And why is that the nice doll? She's white. And can you show me the doll that looks bad? Okay. And can you give, and why does that look bad? Because it's black. Hmm. And why do you think that's a nice doll? Because she's white. And can you give me the doll that looks like you? Fifteen out of the 21 children preferred the white doll. 